So in this problem, we're told a jet pilot takes his aircraft in a vertical loop. If the jet is moving at a speed of 1200 kilometers per hour at the lowest point of the loop, determine the minimum radius of the circle so that the centripetal acceleration at the lowest point does not exceed six Gs. B, calculate the 78 kilogram pilot's effective weight, the force with which the seat pushes up on him at the bottom of the circle, and C, at the top of the circle, assume the same speed. So we're gonna have three parts to this problem, but essentially what we have is we have this pilot, right? He's in a jet, a jet pilot and he's just going around in a circle. So what we're given is, well, let's just start with A. So for A, we're trying to find the minimum radius. So we're gonna be solving for R. So we can say R equals question mark. And we're given a bunch of things, right? So we're told the centripetal acceleration to not exceed six Gs and that at the bottom of the loop, so right here, uh, the pilot is traveling 1200 kilometers per hour. So how are we gonna solve uh, for this? So in order to solve this, you need to know the formula for a centripetal acceleration, which is uh, the centripetal acceleration equals velocity squared divided by the radius. So if we wanna solve for the minimum radius, right? We need to have the centripetal acceleration and we need the velocity. And so luckily they just give us that. So they're giving us the centripetal acceleration. It shouldn't pass, shouldn't exceed 6G. So that's what it's going to be. And then the velocity, they tell us the speed we're traveling at at this point. So all we got to do is just plug it in. But when we do this, we have to make sure the units are correct. So we have to convert Gs into meters per second squared. And then we have to convert uh, velocity into meters per second or else the units won't cancel. So Let's go ahead and do that. So you should know one G is 9.8 meters per second uh, squared. So you would just do six times 9.8. So let me plug that in. Six times 9.8, 58.8. So 58.8 meters per second squared. That's our centripetal acceleration. Now we need to find the velocity in the correct units. So let me do this a bit down here. So we'll do some conversion factors. So 1200 kilometers for every one hour. So we know that um, one hour is 60 minutes. And then uh, we know that one minute is 60 seconds. So these will cancel when you multiply. And we have kilometers per second, but we need it in uh, meters per second. So we know that one kilometer is 1000 meters. So this will now cancel with that. So go ahead and plug this in, 1200 divided by 60, divided by 60 times 1000. So 333.33 meters per second. So now we've got both, so we can just plug it in. So I'm gonna do it over here. A sub R equals the velocity, which we just found, 333.3 squared over the radius, so 58 or sorry, we're solving for the radius. We're not solving for the centripetal acceleration. So if we want to solve for R, we would multiply both sides by R and then divide by A. So let me actually just reorganize this. Sorry about that. So R equals uh, V squared divided by A sub R. So plugging this in now, sorry about that, 333.33 squared, and then divide by the centripetal acceleration. So 58.8. Plugging this in, you will get 1,889.64. So this is meters since we're talking about a distance. So about, let's just say 1.9 times 10 to the three meters. So you can round this wherever you want. I'm just gonna leave it like this. So about 1,900 meters is what it is. Uh, but yeah, so this is your answer to the first part. Um, and now let's go ahead and move on to B. Okay, so now let's do B. So for B, we're trying to calculate the 78 kilogram pilot's effective weight, the force with which the seat pushes up on him at the bottom of the circle. So when they tell us that the, the force with which the seat pushes up on him, I know we're talking about the normal force. So I'm gonna be solving for the normal force here. So F sub N equals question mark, cause that's what we're trying to find. So the best way to do this is by drawing a diagram or the free body diagram. So we obviously have the force due to gravity acting down on him. And then we also have the normal force. And so these are gonna be the two forces acting on him. So what we wanna do now is we're gonna sum the forces in the Y and you'll see why we do that in a second. So some of the forces in the Y, so 
what are the sum of the forces going to be equal to? So since we're going in a circle like this, it's going to be equal to the centripetal uh, force, right? Which is m times a uh, sub r, which is the centripetal acceleration. So if we add up the forces in the y, so if it's going inward, I'm going to call it positive. So f sub n minus mg. So our normal force is going to be equal to mg plus mar. And so this should make sense because these are the two forces that are pushing up on him. Because the centripetal force is going to be pulling him in. And then the force due to gravity is obviously he's on the thing. So it's going to push up against him too because of the normal force. So basically it's just going to be these two. So M is the mass, which they say is what is it, 78. So 78. And then I'm just going to factor this out. So then we just add these. So 9.8 plus the centripetal. Uh, acceleration so we have to add that too but keep in mind that we um found that in the last problem so what was that value that was 58.8 uh, so 58.8 because they said that in the last problem so 9.8 plus 58.8 times 78 yeah so you're gonna get 5350.8 uh, and this is going to be in newtons because we're talking about force. So it's about uh, 5.4 times 10 to the 3 newtons. You can round whoever you'd like. Uh, but that's going to go ahead and be uh, your answer to B. So now let's go ahead and do C. Okay, so for C, we're doing the same thing in B, just at the top of the circle. So this is going to change a little bit because, so imagine it's right here. Uh, it's going to change a little bit just because of it being at the top. So if we do the free body diagram, notice mg is going to point down, but f sub n is also going to point down. And the reason that is is because if I'm sitting here, right, imagine my seat's right here. I'm sitting this way. It's still pushing up down this way versus it would push up like last time. So uh, they're actually both pointing down this time. So if we do the sum of the forces in the y is equal to m, a r right so mass times the centripetal uh, acceleration in this case i'm going to say down is positive or sorry into it is positive right just like last time so into it was positive so m a r equals m g plus f sub n so solving for f sub n m a r minus m g so you always want to take going inside is positive uh but yeah so we have this if we want to solve, so factor out the M, we have AR minus G. So the mass was 78. A sub R is the same as last time. So 58.8, that doesn't change, minus 9.8. So if you do this, you will find you get, so 78, 58.8, yeah, 3822. So this is Newton's. So 3,822 newtons, which is about 3.8 times 10 to the 3 newtons. Uh, but yeah, so let me write this. There we go. So about 3.8 times 10 to the 3, the only thing that changes is the direction. So it alters a little bit depending on where you are in the circle. But yeah, so this is your answer to A here. Uh, this was your answer to B. And this is your answer to C. So uh, yeah, so these are your answers. And hopefully you found this useful.